In this video, I'm going to show you how I'm using Codex Cloud and Codex Web in conjunction with Codex CLI and the Codex extension. A few weeks ago, I went for a walk and I had an idea for a feature. And basically, I opened Codex on my phone and I dictated a feature that I wanted for my app. Codex checked out a branch, made a new version, and started building out that feature. And a few minutes later, I got a notification on my phone that the feature was implemented. I wasn't on my computer, but I just said, let's give it a try. So I said, create a PR. If you don't know what a PR is, it's a pull request. And essentially what it does is it tells whoever's managing the GitHub repo, hey, here's a new feature. Can you merge it into the main code base? At this point, what you really want to do is code review. You want to make sure it doesn't break anything. So I'm out of my computer. I can't do code review right now, but I just want to see how far I could push it. So then I tagged Codex in the PR. And I said, review it. And it spun up a new instance of Codex, looked at the code, found a bug. I then told it, fix that bug. It came back saying, this looks good. So then for my phone, I approved the pull request and merged it with main. And because of the setup in that project, it was immediately deployed to my production environment. Probably not the smartest thing you can do, but it worked and it was really cool. And obviously best practice is to check code and do proper QA. But in this case, it worked great. I covered Codex Cloud a few months ago when it first came out, but then I went deep into Cloud Code. And long story short, it's been a very rocky month for Cloud and Cloud Code users. And Thropic has had a bunch of different issues. I spent hours, if not days, working on Cloud Code and getting garbage output and just pulling my hair out. It's crazy, but the good news is Codex got really good. And there's three different versions of Codex. There's a Codex CLI, which is like Cloud Code. There's a Codex IDE extension, which is essentially like Cursor. And there's Codex Web. And this is what came out in May based on the O3 model. But now they all work together and it's really powerful. And one of the great things about Codex is that it's now connected to your ChatGPT subscription, meaning you don't have to connect it to an API key anymore. In addition to that, the Codex CLI and IDE extension are using GPT-5. You can add MCB servers. The rate limits are much more lax than Cloud or in Cursor. And for the users of Cursor, you get to choose to use GPT-5 and you're not being limited in context or in usage. I think without a doubt, Codex is the best AI coding agent available right now. That doesn't only have to do with the degradation of Claude and Claude code, but also has to do with value for money. So when we look at Cursor is now implementing their new pricing model, you can get a lot of GPT-5 high usage with that $20 plan with Codex. So now I'm just going to show you how to set up Codex Web so you can use it the same way I did. And then you can use it in conjunction with the Codex IDE extension or eventually the CLI. So the important thing to know about Codex on the web is unlike Codex CLI or the IDE extension or in Cursor or in Claude code where you could start from scratch, you have to already be working on an existing code base. Assuming you already have a code base and it's already committed to GitHub, what you do is you first open up ChatGPT in the web and you click on Codex. If you haven't signed in via GitHub, it'll ask you to connect to your account via GitHub. Then it will ask you to connect to certain repos. Let's say you're like me and you already set up Codex a few months ago, but now you want to add new environments. What you do is click here, Manage Environments. Now, if you want to do a new one, you can press Create New Environment. Then you'll be able to choose which GitHub organization you want to use, and then within that organization, which repository you want to use. For this organization, I only allowed these three. If you want to add more, you can click Configure Repository Access and choose more repositories to add. Once you choose the repository, you give it a name, a description. The next part is setting up the environment, and this is where most people get tripped up. I think the best way of doing this is just screenshotting this whole page and then opening the project on your computer. For example, I started a new chat. I said, I want to set up Codex Cloud, look at my code base, look at the screenshot. I gave it the URL for the Codex Cloud environment documentation. Oh yeah, and I gave Codex MCB servers, specifically the Bright Data MCB server that can look at the web and scrape a page's markdown so it's able to get all the context by itself. And I say, tell me how I should configure Codex Cloud so that I can run background tasks or run it in the web. I found that to save me a lot of time in figuring out, do I need to add these environment variables? Do I have to add these secrets? Which setup scripts do I need? And it tells me exactly how to set up this project. And by the way, every project and every environment will be different. So we have everything set up. Just to show you how it works. A few weeks ago, I built an iOS app with Kiro.dev to retroactively add workouts to my Apple Watch's workouts via an iPhone app. Just make it easier. So today I made some changes and then I sent a pull request. So you see now we're in my GitHub and I made a pull request, adding all these little features. And I made a comment and I tagged at Codex and I typed review. And then it reacted by giving these eyes emojis and then a few minutes later, it gave me its code review. So you can see here, ChatGPT Codex Connector. Here are some suggestions. And it left two things to fix. And these came as comments in GitHub. So I wrote another comment at Codex. Go ahead and make those fixes. And at this point, it created a Codex task. And I saw it on my phone. I saw it on the computer. Basically going ahead and implementing these two changes. When it was done, it gave me a summary of the changes it did. It showed me where it failed. 
It's like it wasn't able to test Swift UI in the environment. Okay, so then when we open up cursor where I have the ID extension open, I see now the reason task make requested fixes. I open it up and now I see the diff. I get a summary of what it did. I see that also the testing failures I had here. And then to continue fixing it here, we can press apply changes and continue locally. Press that. Now it's pulling those changes it made from the web into our local version. And then we're back in cursor or VS code or whatever. And now it's using GPT-5. We're able to change the reasoning effort. You change it to agent mode. I can use GPT-5 high to fix it and then also test it via Xcode because Xcode is also open here and also test it on my phone. I remember when Codex first came out a few months ago thinking of how all these products would work together and it couldn't have come at a better time when Claude became unusable or unreliable. And I haven't fully left Claude yet because I have a lot of processes and sub agents working there, but for development and efficiency, I'm working a lot more in Codex. And it's very cool to see how this whole ecosystem is working together. I work on my computer, I work on my phone, and it all integrates really well. So that's how I'm using Codex in the web as well as in the IDE extension. I hope you found this video helpful or insightful. If you have any questions or you wanna let me know how you're using Codex, drop it in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.